really grateful. Oh, great. So again, I just wanted to give a little background for everybody, just kind of hear exactly who you are. Now, you did serve as Lieutenant Governor of the, of the state of Kansas. Tell us about that experience. That's right. So my career, Dave, has always been in business. So I went to K-State. I plan to go back to the family farm. Old brother beat me back, which, you know, zero hard feelings. Um, everything works out um, as they should. We're all very close to this day. So I decided to go into commercial real estate. So I've been a business guy my entire career. Then I got tapped to serve as the Lieutenant Governor of Kansas. So Governor Collier and I led the state together. Really proud of the condition that we left our great state in. Um, specifically, when I was Lieutenant Governor, I headed up agriculture and our rural related issues uh, and worked on a lot of other things um, as well on behalf of our administration. So the group that we're talking to right now basically is has been formulated out of some of the lockdown orders that um, your the, the administration that preceded or uh, that took took over after you guys left uh, had had instituted as far as their their response to the pandemic um, the yep. COVID nineteen situation that we're still finding ourselves in. So obviously, you know, we're looking at you know uh, you know certainly some ramifications from that, and this group was put together because of that. So you know, as you're you did spend some time as lieutenant governor. Um, you know, you want to possibly look at how you and Governor Collier might have changed or looked at this situation a little differently than our current administration. Well, well I think we would have done a lot of things differently. First off, uh, in, in my and I, I'm not going to speak for Governor Collier, um, you know, he, but he's a doctor, which that would have been a tremendous um, asset to have um, in the governorship. And of course, he's appeared on Fox News and has really been one of the leading experts in the country looking at the policy around COVID and he has the credibility to do that as a doctor. Um, that said, in my view, you know, we should not have shut the economy down and we have shut, stayed shut down for way too long. And I know some people would say early on, we did not know what this would be. So I kind of get that, but I just think we um, have stayed shut down for way too long. There's no doubt in my mind, Dave, that since, you know, early March, government in this country has grown and our freedom has shrunk. And whenever that's happening, that's a really bad condition um, for our state and for our country. And we just have to leave these decisions to individual people, good folks that are going to um, you know, make the right decision for them. But this policy of you know, Topeka telling everyone how things should be, this one size fits all is really a one size fits none. And in my view, makes no sense whatsoever. Well. <clears throat> certainly speaks to my heart for sure. And I know we've had those kind of conversations already. So I kind of figured that's what you would say, but. Um, and, and, and devastating for our businesses. And you know that Dave, you know, we, and, and here we are. Uh, another thing that really troubles me is we've also as a country told people their job's not essential. Um, I have never met someone that did not think their job is essential. Every job in this economy matters. We need everyone doing their part. We also find ourselves in a situation where people are getting paid more money to not work or to, um, you know, not return to work, which is a major problem. So, you know, this whole thing, um, you know, has been fraught with issues, but it's way past time to get back to normal and, uh, and return to this great American economy. Yeah, without a doubt, for sure. So let's talk about the, your current race. So obviously, you're looking to go to Congress from Kansas in the big first district. You know, so the the state of affairs right now in Washington, D.C., and specifically in the House of Representatives in Congress, is the Democrats control Congress. Right. So with the Democrats now holding the majority of the House of Representatives in Congress, how important is, is your race, and specifically the first district in the state of Kansas? Well, it's extremely important. We got to get the right Republican in there. And then a big priority for me is not only to win the big first, but also to drive voter turnout in the general to make sure that we keep our Senate seat red, which is absolutely critical, and lay the groundwork to make sure that we win back the governorship in 2022. So this is a really important race for our state. It's really important for the country here moving forward. Yeah, for sure. So what do you see as the biggest priority facing Congress over the next couple of years? Yeah, um, you know, I think a lot of it is, is backing President Trump's agenda. You know, you look at um, the direction he wants to take this country, you know, it count way different than, than you know, Biden would be. Um, on the issues, I'm pro-life, pro-ag, pro-gun, and pro-Trump. 
So when you ask what are the issues you know facing Congress, um, th th that is how I view the world. I'm also really concerned, Dave, with this debt and deficit that we have. You know, we are 23, approaching 24 trillion with a T, 24 trillion dollars in debt. Clearly not sustainable. Uh, we need to be looking at how we trim the fat in Washington and how we get this um, record, these, these deficit spendings under control. Well, I know you, you had put out an endorsement of something near and dear to my heart, which was Convention of the States, and you specifically mentioned the deficit. Yep. You know, and how would you approach your, obviously you're gonna be asked to vote on lots of different things as a congressman. So how will you approach the decisions there when being asked to manage you know, more spending and more borrowing to, and speci specifically now that we're finding ourselves in this situation where we're looking at more and more bailouts that are that are coming down the pike. Yeah, Dave, it's not the government's responsibility to bail out private businesses. Um, you know, so that's that's a big concern to me. Like you mentioned, I did sign on to the Convention of States. I think it's a tremendous effort. One of the big things, of course, is balanced budget amendment. And it's just high, high time. You know, the state of Kansas, I, I personally have to balance my budget. Um, my business has to balance this budget. The state of Kansas has to balance this budget. And the federal government needs to do the same. Now, so far as spending, you know, there are cuts that could be made many, many places in Washington, D.C. You know, you're talking about trillions of dollars. You know, a trillion dollars is a thousand billions. And these numbers are so big, it's hard to even get it around our brain. But, but there's a lot of waste. There's a lot of fraud. Um, I think that, that quite a bit could be cut. And, and it all gets back to, you know, the government is doing things that are outside of the core services and role of the government as defined in the Constitution. And, and, and that's where we've gotten into trouble, and that's where we've seen our government um, grow way too large, in my view. Amen. But uh, looking at your current rates, obviously you have some competition going into this, this particular primary. You know, how would you differentiate yourself as com a you don't have to mention your competitors if you yep. don't want to, but how would you separate yourself from the competition? Uh, yeah, I would be considered more conservative and, and, and the other main candidate's a really nice guy and I say that um, every day, he's a good man. Um, we would differ on taxes and then we would differ on opening up um, specifically. Uh, you know, I have never supported a tax increase, um, property tax, sales tax. Uh, when Governor Collier and I were in office, we had tremendous pressure to raise taxes. We chose not to. We showed that it's possible to fund schools, to do the basic core services that government is supposed to do without raising taxes. Um, so that'd be a difference. And another difference would be on opening up. You know, I just think that many counties have stayed closed down for far too long and we've got to get reopened. We've got to get our economy back to normal. We've got to return to normal demand levels um, to increase our prices. Um, which has dramatic impacts on our farm products, on our commodity prices, and that translates to uh, you know better better conditions for businesses on main streets throughout the big first. You know, something that really has been concerning uh, to this group specifically is in the in is in the packing industry, the the meat yep. packing and the the meat packing industry, and in the producers that we have that are out there that are struggling. You know, how yep. would you look at the current situation, and is there some ideas on how to solve this current situation that we find ourselves in? Sure. Well, you know, the um, you, right now there's maybe not all of your um, viewers know there's an investigation going on. Um, amongst the packers to see if there was any price fixing or anything that was done illegally. You know, this investigation actually started after the Holcomb um, fire last December, and then that um, has been expanded to include some of the actions taken regarding price from, um, you know, from the, from the packing plants earlier this year during COVID. And I understand subpoenas were issued last month, and I support the um, Trump administration in their investigation, and we need to make sure that no price fixing and nothing um, that should have happened, you know, you know, did not happen. Now, more specifically, we've got to, this all gets back again to opening up. We have to open up the economy to return to normal demand levels so that people are eating restaurants again. You know, they're eating, they're consuming steak. We are getting back to normal and that's going to increase demand, which will put upward pressure on prices and will help our, all of our cattle producers as well. Well, obviously, the big first is very ag driven, and that's a big focus. It always has been and always will be in the in the first district. You know, uh, can you talk a little bit? I know you mentioned your your background somewhat, but um, what would you look to be doing in Congress with that sort of background going into sure. into sure, that? Sure, Dave. Great, great. Yep. So I grew up on our family's farm. You know, I family time for us growing up was um, in a wheat field. It was in the in the fields. It was working cattle together on Saturday mornings and afternoons. 
And um, that's just um, what our family's done, both sides of my family, um, for the last 120 years. So agriculture runs in, in my veins. We got endorsed by the Kansas Farm Bureau, which is the gold standard in, in agriculture endorsements in the Big First. So we're really proud of that. Top priority for me in Congress would be serving on the House Ag Committee. You know, agriculture is the biggest driver of our economy in the Big First, and, and I would gladly serve on that committee every day that I'm in office. And I think on that committee then, it's very important that we advocate for agriculture, first with other members of the committee. You know, there's many members of the House Ag Committee that are from urban districts that don't really know or understand modern day agriculture and how our foods produce. So that would be priority number one is advocating for agriculture with a seat on the House Ag Committee. Yeah, we look at China in the news a lot these days and it has a big influence as far as right now with with obviously with the trade war that been off and on and and uh, we you know, obviously the virus originated in China. So it's a little bit of an unknown what our partnership is gonna be with 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 China. How would you go into Congress with knowing what you know right now? Obviously, there's a lot of things still up in the air, but right. um, how would you be approaching our partnership there with the, with the country of China? Well, well, I support President Trump's efforts to rework our trade relationship with China. You know, this president has stood up to the Chinese unlike any other president in my lifetime, and I think that is fantastic. And we know that our ag producers have borne the brunt of that. In many ways, they've been on the tip of the spear in these trade wars, but, but I support the president in what he's doing, you know, phase one of a trade deal got agreed to in January and then COVID hit. And now we've learned that China has been less than forthright with information. Um, there is no question that the Chinese do not have our interest in, in mind. And I think big picture, Dave, we need to be really looking at who do we want our trading relationships to be in the next three years, seven years, and 10 years. And we need to work proactively today to build those relationships so we are not as beholden to, uh, to China and other countries that do not have our interest in heart. Well, let's talk a little bit of, more about your campaign. And I know you're a busy man, and I'm very happy that he took some, carved some time yeah. out for us today. You know, are you having any stops that are coming up in the near future around, oh. around the state? Oh, yeah. So, um, well, tomorrow night we've got a uh, big debate in Reno County in Hutchison we're looking forward to. And then um, have other stops on Wednesday. And then Thursday we are doing a big rollout tour um, as we do the final push here, I think we have about 10 stops um, combined on Thursday and Friday. So we are traveling the district constantly. We have a, a, a team of, of folks who are knocking on doors every day. I was knocking on doors over the weekend in Emporia. Uh, we make um, thousands of phone calls every day. So we have a very robust active ground game, which I'm really proud of. And, and that's translated into uh, good support for us. And I could not be more thrilled and grateful for so much support. Okay, so how do people get a hold of your campaign or where do they go to find sure, out Sure, the best more? thing would just go to our website, which is uh, my name, tracyman.com. That's T R A C E Y M A N N.com. Uh, we have full rate signs up all over the district, yard signs, uh, and communities all over the district. And the best way to get one of those or to learn more would be at tracyman.com. Well, I do appreciate you coming on today, Tracy, and spending the time. Is there any some parting shots that you want to provide to our our? Well, I would our just group? say we're the only can in the race that's been in endorsed by the Kansas Farm Bureau, the NRA, and then also the um, Kansans for Life. So we got endorsed by all three of them. The other candidate also got endorsed by Kansas for Life, but we're the only one to be endorsed by all three. And I wanna go to Washington, D.C. to advocate for our conservative Kansas values and for agriculture and to stand with President Trump to make and keep America great. So we appreciate um, your, your um, viewers' support and vote and really appreciate you having me on, Dave. And Dave, thanks for what you're doing. Um, for the state and for the country, it does matter, and it's having a tremendous impact. Oh, your kind words. Appreciate it, Tracy. And uh, again, thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll sign off from here. Thank you, guys. Oh, great. Thank you.